Hello. Welcome, everybody, to the sixth edition of Why the World Next Anthropologist, designing the future this year. After visiting Amsterdam, Padua, Ljubljana, Tartu, and Durham, we are excited to be today here with you in sunny Lisbon. For the next two days, we will be together debating and discussing design anthropology and its methods and for potential for framing the future of humanity in the world. Before we start, I would like to welcome Helena Ve Vegas and Laura Cortulani on stage, the local organizers. Please, <laughs> big applause. Hi, everybody. We are very pleased to meet you in Lisbon. Uh, we will just quickly thank our local partners uh, we did that event with the help of the CRIA, which is the Anthropoli uh, Anthropology Research Center, and APA, which is the Association for Portuguese Anthropology. I'm Ellen Vega Gomez, and I worked with Laura Cochulani on the local management team. <laughs> It's an amazing pleasure and an honor after one year to bring this event to Lisbon. And uh, I would like to sincerely thanks to all, all of you being here and especially as well to the other part of organizing team, which is for the first time this year we have an interdisciplinary team of organizers. Uh, faculty uh, uh, YAD, Research Center UNITCOM from YAD Universidade Europaia, and uh, ETS, Center for Social uh, Studies, uh, Science, excuse me. So thank you. And uh, one more note, we would sincerely like to thank as well Hugo Rocha, our designer from Vinculo, because this year's event, uh, <laughs> wouldn't be possible without him to be so amazing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. In his recent article, Thomas Hilland Eriksson, our friend, colleague, and one of the most inspiring anthropologists, stated the following. Neoliberal, xenophobic, and reductionist views on humanity have gained currency in the public sphere as real science, thanks to the vigorous and skillful popularizers of such perspectives. Anthropologists, who ought to be the foremost scientific interpreters of the human condition in all its diversity and unity, have been busy doing other things. Concentrating largely on problems internal to the discipline and academically defined, academic anthropologists far too rarely take the opportunity to reflect seriously on what we are saying, to whom, and how we are saying it. Today we invite you, makers of all kinds, to address these challenges to think and act beyond disciplinary confines and to acknowledge the opportunities arising from the collaboration between anthropologists and design. Let us make ourselves busy this weekend with designing the future. Before we give the floor to welcome speeches and personal reflections of our guest speakers, allow us to quickly dive into the sea of practical information. First, can you please pull out your smartphones now? I want to see it. I want to see you're holding your smartphones. I want you to download Howdy. Uh, this app will help you to connect with fellow attendees during and after the event. It's really cool, it's smart. We tested it last year, it worked amazing. It basically works as Tinder for professionals. You will see, you will love it. Go to Apple Play or App Store and use, uh, start using the app by connecting it with your LinkedIn profile. We should totally be sponsors next year, right? <laughs> okay, and thanks to the heroic activity of our social media team, our volunteers, we will be reporting events and activities on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you. Choose your favorite channel and help us expand the debate. And moreover, the whole globe will be designing the future with us 
right now people are watching the streaming via YouTube. So dear global followers, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy and post your questions in the comments section if you have any. We will do our best to relay and pass them on to the speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, as you've probably noticed, we are still alone on the stage and we need to do something about it. Let us introduce you Miguel Valle de Almeida, Professor of Anthropology at Ixte University Institute of Lisbon. Please. <laughs> yes, you can. Doing research in Portugal, Brazil, Spain and Palestine, he published books on masculinity, Portuguese colonialism, same-sex marriage and family. However, Miguel's accomplished career reaches far beyond his academic profile. As an LGBT rights activist, he was a member of Portuguese parliament, instrumental in the passing of gender identity laws. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, and good morning. First of all, thank you for granting me the honor of speaking here today. I welcome you to Lisbon, where in 2020, we will also host the EASA Biennial Conference, celebrating the 30th anniversary of our association. So, why does the world need anthropologists? Well, I'm sorry to say, but the most common answer to this question today would probably be, well, it doesn't. Consider the rampant neoliberal politics that have ravaged our university systems. Consider our current zeitgeist of obsession with profitability and employability in education. Consider the backlash against the social sciences the humanities and the arts, and I see anthropology as a triangulation of these, as part and parcel of the backlash against political correctness and against most social movements. Consider the scorn with which facts and objectivity are regarded today, and the voluptuousness of belief, belief even in fake news, and blind faith in self-proclaimed saviors. Consider the haunting growth of neo-fascist and ultra-nationalist politics in so many countries, right here in Europe, not to mention Brazil, which is so close to us here in Portugal, and where, coming Sunday, the worst-case scenario might, unfortunately, become reality. And since I've mentioned Brazil, consider the persecution of anthropologists in that country and other societies with indigenous peoples and their defenders, by the joint efforts of capital, finance, evangelical churches, and outright classist, racist, sexist, and homophobic politics, and their followers, frustrated by the effects of the contemporary financial phase of capitalism, and deluded by demagogical proposals fueled by ignorance. But that is precisely why the world does need anthropologists. What seemed to be some time ago, and to many of us of a more skeptical, unromantic inclination, what seemed to be a lame statement is now more needed than ever. I mean the study of diversity. I mean cultural dialogue. I mean making the strange familiar and the familiar strange. I mean showing that there are many different ways of being human together and many different solutions, not to mention many different ways of feeling something as a problem in need of a solution. But it has to be more than that still. We also need to participate in the general education of our societies from kindergarten to PhD level. We need to bring home the voices of our interlocutors in the field to translate in lay terms the insights of our analysis of how social worlds function into classrooms, textbooks, the mass media and popular culture and into politics, of course. Oh, another political anthropologist, this guy. Some of you might be thinking. Just a few, I know, and I hope. Let me briefly tell you a story which was mentioned already, and forgive me the lack of modesty. When I took a break from academia and was a member of parliament for one legislative session to help get marriage equality for same-sex couples, as well as a gender identity law, we were victorious, by the way, Anthropology helped me in convincing <laughs> Anthropology helped me in convincing politicians and TV audiences, the public, that we were not taking away anything from anyone, 
but rather granting more rights to more people. That is, we were adding something to the community, to the commonwealth. Because I translated the heterosexual experience of emotional bonding, of sexual pleasure, of caring for children, into the homosexual experience and vice versa, and was able to demonstrate that it was not structure of the couple, of the family, that matters, but rather substance, practice, content. We can do that in politics and we have to do it in this troubled remake of the 1930s that we are living. And if we, and if we can do it in that arena of conflict, strong emotion and opposing values that is politics, we can certainly do it in all spheres of collective life, from the workplace to the environment, from housing to animal welfare, from medicine to humanitarian aid, from tourism to, say, industry and design. We are the specialists of showing that other worlds are not only possible, but that they are actually there and here, and that worlds are made of other worlds affecting each other. We certainly can take one step further, and by resorting to our knowledge of the variety of human experience, we can also help design the future. Thank you. Obrigado. Thank you.